So I really want to talk a little bit about the waiting period. And so there's um, often at least a 10 day um, wait period after you've t had your embryo transfer. And so having been a fertility consultant for so many surrogate moms and intended parents and I've gone through it myself, I think that this is probably the hardest part about surrogacy. And yes, you have this crazy rush to wait thing where you do so much rush, 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 and then finally you have this embryo transfer if all went well, and you have this crazy wait period. So um, there's a lot that can happen in those two weeks and I just have some tips for you. So I think the number one thing is I would say get off the internet and getting off the internet means doesn't mean you should just shut off your phone and, and not talk to your friends but sometimes these forums that have so many other people's um, opinions or they're sharing with you what's going on with their journey um, it can get really stressful so and, and also because on these forums yes you're learning what other people are um, kind of like doing or what's happened for them but actually can might do you more harm than good because it might get you a little bit down if you're on your second embryo transfer and someone else is on a different journey i think that's just important for you for me to kind of put that out there you should find some ways to actually stay distracted so that's actually my other tip staying distracted is um easier said than done and staying distracted um it can be healthy, but it also makes sure you can find a way to manage. Um, like you don't want to be so distracted that you you forget that you're a surrogate mom or you're going to have a child as a as an intended mom or intended father. So, um, what are some of the things I have done in the past to be more distracted? Is maybe try new things that you haven't tried, um, or perhaps um, you know be very passionate about something else and then kind of spend time on that. It's, it's really different for every single person. And as an intended parent myself, I really know what it means to get distracted. I also have ADHD and um, it's very easy to be, oh, oh look, there's a, a goldfish kind of thing or a squirrel. Um, so writing about your feelings is another tip. I think writing is not necessarily something that everyone should be scared of. Just because you write about your feelings about this doesn't mean it has to be in a blog, doesn't mean it has to be shared with anybody. You can just write it out, put it in a little book by your bedside table or in your desk, and it doesn't mean you have to write it every day. Um, I know that one of the things I did was I used to write a little bit, like write letters to this child that was coming, and I thought that was really meaningful for me. Um, that might be a bit too sappy for everybody else, but for me as an intended parent, that's kind of what I did. Um, another kind of way you can write as an intended parent is you could write letters to your um, surrogate mom, baby. Not just emails, like hand write le handwritten letters are kind of cute too. Um, but you can also write in forums and share. So as I just told you not to go in the forums, this is another way for you to write um, about your feelings in really safe groups too. These groups can be also a group that you can create for your own. So we also, I, I know that we have surrogate moms at Proud Fertility who have their own little special Facebook groups that are created for um, the support community that she has and she writes about her feelings there too. Okay, so act like you're pregnant. That is a really uh, funny one and as a single intended father like myself, um, it's a little bit of a problem but for surrogate moms or for other intended parents or even for me, if you act like you are pregnant, you don't necessarily kind of fall into that trap of being um, upset and thinking that it might not work. It's just, just being positive and acting like you are pregnant. Um, stay active is another tip. So staying active is super important because when you are exercising or doing something physical, you're going to feel um, um, just energized and and it's on top of being distracted, your mind is focused on something else. You get all these amazing different chemicals and endorphins and just a lot of feel good, um, feel good kind of things going on. Um, so I guess the next one is pee on all the sticks if you must. So there's lots of different pee sticks. I, I've tried myself, so that didn't work. But uh, for this is for uh, intended moms who are using egg donors or um, surrogate moms. It's 
I, it's so funny because sometimes I'll see so many um, messages from surrogate moms who tell me, oh my gosh, I think I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh, it's, it's like, I think it's awesome. If you think that helps you, I think you should totally pee as much as you want on these sticks. And um, it's kind of cool. There are some dollar store sticks, and they work just as good too. And there's also some really expensive sticks. Um, just be aware that sometimes um, the sticks can be false positive, or they could be um, the other way around too. Um, really wait for the blood test to really confirm everything, but the pee sticks might just be um, helpful for you to do something. But it's just kind of my way of thinking. And I think that's just kind of a, a big little, um, that big, that those are just some of my tips. So I think that could be helpful for you if you have um, experienced something called uh, a wait period like this. This is so infinite, infamous. I have a comment on the comment below and share this video. And uh, this is just one perspective from, from Proud Fertility's uh, managing director, managing director Nathan Chan. Um, these are just some of my, some of my thoughts. So thank you very much for joining.